in the far reaches of our solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune, something unusual is happening. A mysterious force is pushing around icy objects, and clusters of these objects have unusual orbits that can't be explained by the known planets alone. Scientists think this could be caused by a massive hidden planet, often called Planet Nine. First suggested in 2016, this potential new planet has fascinated astronomers. Interestingly, this isn't the first time a planet has been proposed using mathematics. Neptune and Pluto were both discovered because their gravitational influences were predicted before they were seen through a telescope. Astronomers noticed irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and later in the Kuiper Belt objects, leading to the discovery of these distant worlds. A century later, we find ourselves in a similar situation with Planet Nine, following this fascinating tradition of using mathematical predictions to uncover hidden planets. Some researchers believe it might have been a rogue planet captured by our sun's gravity, while others think it could have formed from the same disk of gas and dust as the other planets. If Planet Nine exists, it is believed to be 10 times more massive than Earth and orbit the sun at a distance of 400 to 800 astronomical units, which is 400 to 800 times the distance between the Earth and the sun astronomers have been eagerly hunting for clues using powerful telescopes and advanced computer models to track its influence. After years of watching the sky, solving mathematical equations, and running complex computer simulations, they now have the strongest evidence yet that Planet Nine really exists. This discovery introduces an exciting plot twist in the story of the hidden planet. So, what evidence did the researchers uncover in their hunt for Planet Nine? If we have found exoplanets hundreds of trillions of miles away, why has it been so challenging to detect Planet Nine directly in our cosmic backyard? even with some of the most powerful telescopes at our disposal. Although Planet Nine was first proposed in 2016, its story began soon after the discovery of Uranus in 1781. Over the years, astronomers noticed something strange. Uranus wasn't moving exactly as their calculations predicted. It seemed to speed up and slow down in its orbit, hinting that there might be an unseen force acting on it. In the 1840s, two mathematicians, Urbain Le Verrier in France and John Couch Adams in England independently suggested that the unusual movements of Uranus could be caused by the gravitational pull of an unseen planet. They used complex mathematics to predict where this invisible planet might be located. This was a bold hypothesis, relying solely on mathematical calculations to propose the existence of an unknown world. Le Verrier sent his predictions to Johann Gall, an astronomer at the Berlin Observatory. On the night of September 23, 1846, Gall and his assistant pointed their telescope to the part of the sky Le Verrier had indicated. To their amazement, they found Neptune on their first night of searching. This was a remarkable achievement, as it was the first time a planet had been discovered through mathematical prediction rather than by chance observation. After the successful discovery of Neptune in 1846, astronomers thought they had a complete picture of the major planets in our solar system. However, when they tracked Neptune's orbit, they found that Neptune, much like Uranus before it, exhibited slight deviations from its predicted path. These irregularities were subtle but persistent. Given the success of using gravitational influences to predict Neptune's existence based on the orbit of Uranus, astronomers wondered if a similar method could reveal yet another planet even further out. This led to the discovery of Pluto. After more than eight decades, on February 18, 1930, Clyde Tombaugh, a young astronomer at the Lowell Observatory, identified a faint distant object moving against the backdrop of stars, confirming the presence of a new celestial body. Initially hailed as the long-sought planet X, Pluto was later found to be much smaller than expected. Pluto's mass was insufficient to account for the gravitational anomalies observed in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. This meant that something more was out beyond the orbit of Neptune that hadn't been discovered yet. In 1951, Dutch-American astronomer Gerard Kuiper predicted that there could be not one, but several icy objects beyond the orbit of Neptune, and Pluto was just a part of that bigger belt of objects known as the Kuiper Belt. The first direct observational evidence of Kuiper Belt objects, KBOs, came in 1992 when astronomers David Jewett and Jane Liu discovered 1992 QB1 a small icy body beyond Neptune. This discovery confirmed the existence of a population of objects in the region Kuiper had predicted. As more objects were discovered beyond Neptune, 
the term transneptunian objects, TNOs, was introduced to encompass all objects orbiting the Sun beyond Neptune. TNOs are a broader category that includes any small body in the solar system that orbits the Sun at a greater average distance than Neptune, 30 astronomical units or more. The discovery of Sedna in 2003 added to this intrigue. Sedna, another large TNO with a highly elliptical orbit, has a perihelion, closest approach to the Sun, of about 76 astronomical units and an aphelion, farthest point from the Sun, of about 936 astronomical units. In the next few years, more extreme transneptunian objects were discovered. There's something unusual about the orbits of TNOs. Imagine you scatter dozens of marbles on a flat surface. Normally, you would expect the marbles to be spread out randomly. But if many of the marbles are oddly clustered in one specific area, it would imply that some force or factor is pulling them together. This scenario mirrors what scientists have observed with TNOs. Their orbits are not randomly dispersed but rather show clustering. Usually, if TNOs were orbiting randomly, their paths around the sun would be spread out in all directions, just like the marbles in our analogy. Their perihelion points would be at different points in the sky, not bunched or clustered in one area. However, their perihelion points tend to be clustered in one part of the sky. This clustering is highly unusual and suggests that there is a common factor influencing their orbits. Additionally, the long axes of their orbits, the lines connecting their closest and farthest points from the sun, are aligned in a way that is statistically unlikely to happen by chance. This alignment further supports the idea that an external force, possibly the gravitational pull of a large unseen planet, is at work. The consistent orientation of these orbits provides strong evidence for the hypothesis that Planet Nine is exerting its influence from afar, shaping the orbits of these distant objects. Building on the discoveries of Sedna, Eris, and other TNOs, the hypothesis of a distant, undiscovered Planet Nine gained significant momentum. In January 2016, astronomers Konstantin Batygin and Mike Brown published a groundbreaking paper that further solidified this theory. They analyzed the orbits of six distant TNOs and suggested that these patterns could be explained by the gravitational influence of a previously unknown planet. They proposed that this hypothetical Planet Nine would be about 10 times the mass of Earth and orbit the Sun in a highly elliptical path ranging from 400 to 800 astronomical units. When Neptune was discovered, it happened remarkably quickly. Astronomers located it on the first night of searching based on mathematical predictions. However, the hunt for Planet Nine has proven to be far more challenging. There are four main problems. The first is its distance. Planet Nine is believed to be 10 to 20 times more distant from Earth than Pluto. At such a great distance, the planet would receive very little sunlight, making it almost invisible against the backdrop of stars and hard to detect with current telescopes. The second problem is that Planet Nine's orbit is likely highly elliptical. This means that it could spend most of its time in the most distant and darkest regions of its orbit, far from the sun's illumination. When it is at these farthest points, the planet would be even fainter and harder to spot. The third problem is the vast area of the sky where Planet Nine could be located. This wide search area requires astronomers to meticulously scan large regions, often rechecking and verifying observations to ensure nothing is missed. Finally, the planet's slow movement across the sky complicates detection efforts. Because of its immense distance from the Sun, Planet Nine moves very slowly relative to the background stars. This slow movement means distinguishing it from the background stars requires prolonged and repeated observations. Astronomers must carefully track potential candidates to confirm they are moving objects, not just stationary stars. Given these challenges, Simulations become an indispensable tool in the search for Planet Nine. Simulations enable researchers to model complex systems and predict behaviors that are difficult or impossible to observe directly. Let's have a look at how researchers use simulation to find the strongest statistical evidence of Planet Nine. The orbits of TNOs are not stable over long periods. Over millions of years, Neptune's strong gravitational pull can alter their paths scattering them widely or even ejecting them completely from the solar system. This dynamic indicates that TNOs are continuously pushed into orbits intersecting with Neptune. To investigate this further, 
a research team set up simulations based on the initial conditions presumed for the formation of the inner Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is thought to be a distant spherical shell of icy bodies encircling the solar system, extending from about 2,000 to 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun. They chose TNOs with perihelia greater than 30 astronomical units and semi-major axes ranging from 100 to 5,000 astronomical units, resulting in a simulation of 10,000 particles. The research team ran two sets of simulations, one including the hypothesized Planet 9 and its predicted location, and another without Planet 9. The results indicated that Planet 9 could affect the orbits of TNOs through the direct coupling of the Runge lens vector. This vector describes the shape and orientation of an orbit under the influence of a force like gravity. Its direction gives the orientation of the ellipse, and its magnitude is directly related to the orbital eccentricity. A zero Runge lens vector corresponds to a circular orbit, while non-zero values indicate elliptical orbits. Planet 9 can make these orbits more stretched and change their inclination angle. The simulations showed that without Planet 9, fewer TNOs come close to Neptune. Notably, without Planet 9, the number of TNOs that closely approach Neptune sharply decreases as distance from the Sun decreases, peaking only around 30 astronomical units. Conversely, with Planet 9, the close approaches happen more consistently over a wider range of distances, starting from about 16 astronomical units. To validate their findings, the team conducted a statistical analysis, comparing the patterns observed in the simulations with actual space data. They considered observational biases and matched the simulation results with 17 known TNOs that have perihelia less than 30 and semi-major axes greater than 100. The comparison strongly supported the model including Planet 9, showing a much higher likelihood of 0.41 compared to just 0.34 for the model without Planet 9. This substantial difference in probabilities indicates that the model with Planet 9 aligns more closely with the observed behaviors of TNOs, suggesting a significant role for Planet 9 in shaping their orbits. Later this decade, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile will start its operations equipped with a powerful 8.4-meter telescope capable of conducting nightly all-sky surveys. This observatory will leverage the findings from recent studies, including those suggesting the existence of Planet 9, by closely observing the movements of distant TNOs. If these TNOs consistently exhibit patterns of proximity to the Sun beyond about 16 astronomical units, as the Planet 9 model predicts, it could serve as a crucial indicator of the elusive planet's presence. This blend of cutting-edge technology and groundbreaking research can significantly deepen our understanding of the solar system's outer regions. It could eventually lead to the long-awaited confirmation of Planet 9. Recently, the James Webb Space Telescope measured how fast the universe is expanding. The results have confirmed the biggest crisis in cosmology, showing there's a fundamental flaw in our currently accepted model of the universe. If you missed this episode, be sure to catch up on the exciting discovery. And if you learned new things from this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more updates. See you in the next one.